China has announced it will step up its efforts to vaccinate people against COVID-19 with a focus on the elderly. The National Health Commission says it will also shorten the time gap between basic vaccination and booster shots to three months. Well, over the weekend, there have been protests in major cities against China's zero COVID policy, with some demonstrators calling for President Xi Jinping to step down. Speaking in the last hour or two, a senior Chinese official acknowledged that some people have been unhappy with the lockdowns and that lockdown measures in some places are being investigated. Let's have a listen. Some residents and the general public say major problems are the oversimplification of the prevention control narrative and arbitrary imposition of restrictions and the one-size-fits-all approach. Some localities have arbitrarily expanded the areas and people to be put on lockdown. And in some regions, without approval, randomly putting the entire locality on stack. At present, localities have established an ad hoc working committee to deal with the wrongful practice of arbitrary imposition of restrictions. Well, our correspondent Surinjana Tewari is in Singapore. Although there have been vaccinations available in China, it hasn't been uh, as widespread as we've seen in other countries. And so health officials are uh, now saying that they're going to extend that program, they're going to accelerate the program, especially for the elderly in China. They're going to allow more people over the age of 60 to access uh, vaccinations and also boosters. Now, uh, as uh, we saw there, there was a question about the protests, about the number of people who are unhappy in China, about the COVID controls, about those strict lockdowns and that mass testing. The senior health officials actually defended uh, the measures that the authorities have been implementing, saying that the unhappiness is more about a one-size-fits-all approach as opposed to the measures themselves and also overzealous implementation of the measures in some areas. And is that significant that he used that phrase to, to actually admit that some of it was overzealous? Yeah, I mean, it is. And it is, uh, you know, a senior health official talking about a senior, uh, a major health crisis uh, at the end of the day. But uh, the other thing that's been happening in the last hour is the foreign ministry has held a press conference. And in that, the, uh, an official did say that China has a rule of law that all, its, uh, all of people's freedoms um, are protected, but that they must be exercised within the framework of the law. And that's really the most significant statement we've had from the Chinese authorities since those unprecedented protests on the weekend that we saw in a number of cities. We're hearing that there is still a very heavy police pre presence in a number of cities, especially in Shanghai and Beijing. And there are murmurs online. We're hearing reports that there are more protest plans, although we haven't seen that actually play out in the last two days, at least. And, and just just briefly, when the, the, the phrase again that they've used about the legal um, powers, can you just again decode that? What are they saying there? Yeah, I think what they're saying is there's been a lot of criticism of uh, China's zero COVID policy. It is the only country in the world that still has such strict measures. Now they're seeing people inside China. It's becoming a social issue. They're very unhappy with the state of things. And there seems to be some sort of response. Having said that, both the press conferences continue to defend the Chinese authorities' protocols, their plans, their way of dealing with COVID. But this seems to be some sort of compromise when it comes to that zero COVID policy. Surinjan Tawari there. Well, China is also top of the agenda for the British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak, who gave his first major speech on foreign policy on Monday. Mr Sunak has criticised the Chinese authorities for what he called their authoritarian response to the protests. Let's have a listen to some of what he had to say. We recognise China poses a systemic challenge to our values and interests. A challenge that grows more acute as it moves towards even greater authoritarianism. Instead of listening to their people's protests, the Chinese government has chosen to crack down further, including by assaulting a BBC journalist. 
the media and our parliamentarians must be able to highlight these issues without sanction, including calling out abuses in Xinjiang and the curtailment of freedom in Hong Kong. Now, of course, we cannot simply ignore China's significance in world affairs to global economic stability or issues like climate change. The US, Canada, Australia, Japan and many others understand this too.